Hi guys, welcome to the Six Elements, amazing stories about PGMs, the channel where we tell you things that you will not find on Wikipedia. I'm Prudence and I'm going to tell you something really curious today. Palladium is a noble metal that is obtained from ore and the process is very complex and long and requires special machinery and chemicals. In our today's video, I'm going to discuss the process that happens at the concentrator. So how do we obtain palladium from ore? Well, the process starts with underground mining, where ore containing both available minerals and gang is brought to the surface. After drilling, the ore containing um, big rocks and small rocks is brought to the surface. And these rocks are then transported to a concentrator plant. A concentrator plant is a factory or industrial plant that produces concentrates from ores. Usually, a concentrator plant is very close to a mine because we want to save on transport costs. So we use a conveyor belt to transport this ore to the plant. A conveyor belt is a moving belt, more like an inclined moving walkway. So this ore is transport, uh, transported on this belt and then it is tipped into a silo. A silo is a huge storage tank where we tip all our ore that we get from the mine. So from the silo, we have another belt at the bottom of the silo that is moving all from the silo to our first stage of processing, which is crushing. Before it goes to our first stage of processing, um, we have to use magnets to remove every material that is foreign, which is scrap metal, and then we remove wood manually. But before the ore is crushed, we have to screen it first. So it goes through screening and then the particles or the rocks that can pass through the screen bypass the crushing process and move on to milling. And then the big rocks that were not able to pass through the screen move on to crushing before they go to milling. So our milling stage is another size reduction stage, um, which is used to actually unshackle or set free the minerals from the ore. So a mill is a huge rotating drum with steel balls or rods inside, right? So it's a drum. It has two open ends. The feed goes in one end and goes out another. So inside we have steel balls that help with grinding. And then we also add water inside the mill to help with um, the grinding. It helps disperse the ore so that it, get in, it gets in contact with the steel balls so that the grinding can be more efficient. And then um, the time that the ore takes inside the grinding mill is called retention time. Now this is a very important variable because the longer the retention time, the more the ore gets in contact with the steel balls and the more efficient the grinding becomes. So as the ore comes in, uh, the mill rotates, uh, it gets ground into fine particles and then as it comes in it goes out as well. And remember we added water inside the mill so it's not going to come out as um, dry ore anymore but it's going to come out as fine particles in a thin sloppy mud. So it's going to be wet with thin particles inside. But these particles um, are, are still not of the same size. So it's not um, ideal for our next stage of processing, which is froth rotation. So we need to separate these particles again. We separate big particles from smaller ones using an equipment called a cyclone. A cyclone is a machine with no moving parts. It works in conjunction with a pump, right? So the slurry is pumped at a very high speed inside the cyclone. A cyclone is cone-shaped, right? It's cone-shaped. And then the slurry comes in at a very high speed. And because of the cone shape of the cyclone, when the slurry comes in, it produces a circular motion, right? This is called centrifugal force. So this spin or centrifugal force causes the heavier, um, bigger particles to move towards the wall of the cyclone, right? While leaving the lighter particles in the middle. And because of this small opening at the bottom of the cyclone, which is called the apex or the spigot, it causes pressure and it causes the finer particles to move out of the vortex finder at the top of the cyclone. So we recover lighter, smaller particles at the top and then heavier, bigger particles at the bottom, right? And then these particles that are recovered at the bottom go back to the milling circuit 
to be ground again because um, they, 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 they were not ground to the size that we want for our next process. So these fine particles are what is going to move to our next stage of processing which is called froth flotation. Froth flotation is a very crucial stage because um, it is where we separate our sulfites from our chromites and waste. Our PGMs, um, remember, they are still associated with copper nickel sulfides at this stage. They are still locked in copper nickel sulfides, so they are not um, pure PGMs. So in actual fact, um, froth flotation separates the sulfides from chromites. And remember that chromite is our important byproduct. So it is uh, after flotation, it is sent to the spiral plant to be treated further, to be concentrated some more, and then the chromite is sold commercially. So how does froth flotation work? Froth flotation is um, a very, very selective uh, process. It uses chemicals that either render the available mineral hydrophobic and then uh, render the non-available mineral hydrophilic. The meaning of hydrophobic is when something is hydrophobic, it means that it is afraid of water or it doesn't tend to mix with water. So uh, our collector, which is the chemical that is added in the flotation cell, will make our available mineral hydrophobic so that it doesn't mix with water. And our depressant will suppress the waste and make it to be um, recovered in the pulp phase. So this is how a, fl a flotation cell works. This is a flotation cell. It looks like a giant mixer or a blender. It has an impeller inside that mixes the slurry. It mixes the slurry to keep the particles dispersed inside so that they get into contact with the, our chemicals, right? And then there's air that is added. And then it is distributed at the bottom. There are distributor plates that distribute the air and then they cause bubbles. They cause bubbles inside, right? And then the minute we add our collector, which is our chemical that makes our valuable mineral hydrophobic, that valuable mineral, which is our sulfides, gets attached to the collector and then immediately attaches itself to the air bubbles because it is afraid of water, remember, hydrophobia. It's hydrophobic, so it will attach itself to air bubbles while our gang minerals or waste and chrome is suppressed. And then we recover our sulfides in the froth phase. There's another chemical that we add called frother. Frother makes sure that our bubbles are strong and they don't break, right? Because if they break, then we lose our value to the pulp phase and then um, we recover our our available mineral in the pulp phase, we, we throw it away basically. So that's why we need frother to make the bubbles strong so that we can recover as much as possible in the froth phase. And then after that, we don't use actually one cell because it is not a very efficient process. It won't be efficient if we use one cell. So we have to use a number of cells, a series of cells. If it's more than one cell, then it's called a bank. It's no longer called a cell. So we recover this pulp phase, it goes to another flotation cell where the very same process is um, happens. The very same process is repeated. And then again, the pulp, the pulp phase from that um, flotation cell moves on to another flotation cell. Usually in a flotation circuit, we have um, about three banks of cells. The first bank of cells is called the roughers. The second one is called the cleaners. And then the third one is called the recleaners. And the last, last, last cell would have the least um, sulfides because now we have, we have tried to recover the sulfides in all of the cells. And then the pulp from the last cell would then go to, because it is rich in chromite, right? It will go to our spiral plant where it is treated and then to separate chromite from the waste. And then the chromite is sold commercially. And then the waste goes to our tailing thickener. And then this that we recovered in the fraud phase, our sulfides, they go to our concentrate thickener. Well, a thickener is a dewatering, um, is the dewatering machine. It looks like a, a, a large swimming pool. It looks like a huge swimming pool. So what happens in a thickener is when the slurry is introduced, we want to recover water as much as possible inside in the thickener. So it's it's for recycling actually. We dewater the slurry so that we can get water and then so that the water can be used again in the plant. 
but then because the particles don't settle as fast as we want them to settle in a thickener, now we use a chemical called a flocculant so what a flocculant does is it makes the particles heavier so that they settle much faster so this is what happens in a thickener i'm going to prepare a slurry now it's usually about 10 percent solids so this is not pgm ore it is just um it's clay but it's very representative of the slurry that you would find at a, a pgm um, concentrator okay this is what our slurry looks like and these particles don't look like they're gonna settle anytime soon right so we add flocculant I mean, there you go it makes them heavier and then they go down they settle much faster and then uh, we get clean water at the top which is recovered and used at the plant again and then um, the slurry that we get at the bottom of the thing now is pumped out and then it is sent to our smelter so i'm going to discuss what happens at the smelter in our next video and after the smelter i will explain as well what happens at the base metals refinery and finally the precious metals refinery and by the way did you know that today space mining is becoming a realistic possibility well to know more about this stay tuned in our channel and follow us on twitter and facebook thank you Thank you.